Let's take a closer look at Zeppelins today and how it all began. Let's start with early balloons. The simplest kind of a balloon to transport people is the hot air balloon. Hot air has lower density, so a balloon filled with hot air creates lift. But pretty soon the hot air balloon was superseded by the hydrogen filled balloon. So you didn't need fire on board anymore to heat the air. And although hydrogen production needs lots of energy, it was possible everywhere. First balloons were just used to go up and down, so they stayed connected to the ground. Later they were used to fly somewhere, floating in the wind. Hydrogen balloons got more and more reliable and even the military used them for observation. In the meantime there was a young soldier in Germany, Ferdinand von Zeppelin. He was born in 1838 and paused his military career in 1858 to study engineering in Tübingen. In 1863 he was sent to North America as an observer in the Civil War. Here he saw balloons in the military use for the first time and he could fly in a balloon himself for the first time. But who was this Zeppelin? There is one story to display his character. On 19th of July 1870 France declares war to Germany. Germany's troops, including General Zeppelin, gather at the French border, but don't cross yet because they don't know where the French troops are. Zeppelin decides to do a trip behind enemy lines with four officers and eight soldiers. The German group on horses surprised the French border soldiers, who didn't react quickly enough and couldn't catch them anymore. Shortly after, they ran into two French soldiers, which resulted in a fight. One French soldier could escape, the other one, named Köhler, was captured, but released after half an hour. The Germans continued their trip behind enemy lines and the French soldier Köhler informed his colleagues of the German group. The French sent forces to find the German group. The next day, French soldiers found the German group and one French soldier and one German soldier died in a fight, and these were the first victims of this war. The other Germans got captured, just Zeppelin could escape with the horse of the dead German soldier. He reached German lines again on the next day and based on his information of this trip, the German army started their attack on Weissenburg. A couple of months later, France and Germany were in peace negotiations already, but because Germany wanted Elsass-Lorraine, the French didn't accept and the war went on. As a result, German troops surrounded Paris and cut it off its supply lines. Among the German troops was Zeppelin again, and he was impressed to see that the French started sending balloons out of the city to transport more than 100 kg of letters, high-ranking politicians, military personnel, dogs and pigeons. These animals were sent so they could carry messages back into the city from the outside. They organized a balloon production in the surrounded city, which was the first organized air vehicle production line in the world, and to the German's surprise, they send out balloons pretty frequently. The German troops tried to shoot the balloons down, but couldn't do so with their simple guns. So German company Krupp developed the first anti-aircraft cannon in the world. It was easy to adjust and could be installed on a movable platform like a horse carriage. Today you can see it in the military museum in Dresden. But also this cannon wasn't very successful and could only shoot down one balloon. So the Germans developed a system to track the balloon's position and send troops to their landing place. To avoid this, the French were now only flying at night, which had the disadvantage that they had absolutely no orientation, and people in the balloon could only see where they ended up the next morning with the first daylight. Some balloons ended up in the sea, some in the Netherlands, some in Belgium, and one found himself in snowy Norway on the next day. So Zeppelin observed all this, was impressed by what he can do with balloons, but the disadvantage was that you couldn't steer. He continued his military career, but kept on working on the idea of how to improve this technology. He mentioned airships in his diary in 1874 for the first time. And one little side story, the French soldier Köhler, who got captured by Zeppelin's German group in 1870, was captured by German troops later on, and was a prisoner of war. He was offered freedom, but he didn't want to betray his homeland, so he stayed prisoner of war for the following months until the war ended. After the war, Elsass Lorraine belonged to Germany, and he as a French official couldn't live there anymore and had to move to France. He contacted Zeppelin, the German soldier who he fought in the war and who captured him and asked for help. 
Zeppelin organized an exception with the German authorities and Köhler could move back to his hometown and spend the last years of his life there. And Zeppelin retired in 1890. He was 52 now and while others enjoy their retirement, he now fully concentrated on airships. There are different kinds of airships. Rigid airships and non-rigid airships. Non-rigid airships are basically one large banana-shaped balloon which save weight for additional structure. But Zeppelin was convinced that a rigid airship was the best design because you have a stable frame with a skin and inside are multiple balloons. Disadvantages that you have to carry this additional frame, but advantages that you can house different things inside the hull and you can even walk through the ship during the flight to do maintenance. In 1895 he filed a patent application which was granted in 1898. He asked the German Emperor Wilhelm II for support, who installed an expert group to analyze Zeppelin's design. Members of this group were Helmholtz, Assmann, Slaby, Müller-Breslau and Hans Groß. Groß himself worked on airships and was the biggest critic of Zeppelin's design. The group suggested not to support Zeppelin's project and he became a public clown. People laughed at him in the streets and said he should stop with this nonsense. That wasn't really what people understood as a nice retirement. But Zeppelin didn't give up. He needed 1 million Reichsmark to start the project. His idea was supported with only 6,000 Reichsmark by the German state and he could collect 100,000 Reichsmark from France. He became member of the German Club of Engineers, VDI, who supported his idea and publicly asked people to support Zeppelin financially. That way he could collect another 400,000 Reichsmark. The rest came from his own pocket and he founded his first airship company together with investors, Gesellschaft zur Förderung der Luftschifffahrt, in 1898. So he started building the first Zeppelin and although people still made fun of him, Zeppelin said, It's normal that people don't support new technology, but I have a clear goal and my calculations are correct. So he built the first Zeppelin LZ-1 at the Bodensee, or Lake Constance, the largest lake in the south of Germany. He used a floating hull so the whole building could be pulled away from the coastline for the first start, to have no obstacles around. Also, a hard landing on water would still be better than a hard landing on land. So the large lake was the perfect environment to start the project. His first Zeppelin had a 130 kg ballast weight underneath and its location could be changed to trim the vehicle. At the first flight in 1900, this mechanism broke and the Zeppelin had to land on water. While doing so, it punctured one of his hydrogen bags. At the second flight, one fuel tank was accidentally filled with water, so the engine suddenly stopped and it had to land on water again. But nevertheless, the Zeppelins were flying and they were getting better. In October 1900, it was flying in front of experts who deemed the Zeppelin to be a nice prototype, but not usable for military purposes. That was the end for the Zeppelins. The flights and repairs were expensive, they didn't have passengers yet, they didn't sell a Zeppelin yet, and so the company had to be resolved. All staff was laid off, the hall was demolished, and LZ-1 was disassembled. Zeppelin himself had to pay back all debts from his own pocket. But again, the now 62-year-old Zeppelin didn't give up. In the following five years, he kept on looking for money and after long discussions got permission to organize a lottery. That earned him 125,000 Reichsmark. Together with 50,000 Reichsmark from the German government and 100,000 Reichsmark from his own pocket, he could now build a second airship, the LZ-2. With all the financial problems and with only one employee left of his previous project, it took until 1905 to build a new hall and rebuild the organization around the Zeppelin. And by the way, this one employee was Ludwig Dürr, a young engineer who developed all Zeppelins from LZ-1 in 1900 to LZ-130, the last one in 1938. But back to the beginning. Again, everything went wrong. LZ-2 came out of the floating hall, was caught by a gust of wind, was pushed against the garage wall and was heavily damaged. After it was repaired, it successfully started, but the controls were stuck and it tipped to one side, which caused the engines to run out of fuel and they stopped. Zeppelin himself was flying the airship and he decided to release hydrogen to get back on the ground. And landing on land was never done before. They always chose the large lake Bodensee to avoid all the risks. 
and so the ship landed on a field but was damaged by trees. Of course, in the night there was a thunderstorm and because they fixed it at front and rear, it couldn't turn into the wind and got blown away and got heavily damaged. They used saws and axes to disassemble it and horse carriages brought back the pieces to their garage. Zeppelin could use some remaining parts for his next Zeppelin, the LZ-3. And for the first time, his engineer Ludwig Dürr used a wind tunnel to improve the Zeppelin's shape. He found out that adding control surfaces at the back would stabilize the Zeppelin. Already at the end of 1906, LZ-3 could start for the first time, and this became a very successful and very reliable airship. Zeppelin learned from all the previous mistakes and accidents, and now even his critics were convinced. The German military bought LZ-3 for 2 million Reichsmark. With this money, they could build the next Zeppelin, the LZ-4. Additionally, the German state paid 500,000 Reichsmark for the new project, but requested an airship which can fly for 24 hours. So Zeppelin had to increase the length to now 149 meters to fit a total of 17 gas bags. During the first test flight, they realized that the rudder was too small for such a long Zeppelin, so they added two smaller rudders each side. But also with the LZ-4, luck was not on their side. And in 1908, while being fixed at the airfield in Echterding, a gust of wind pushed the Zeppelin into some trees, which punctured the gas bags and caught fire. They lost this airship in a massive fire and Zeppelin himself did not have any money to keep on going. But the now 70-year-old Zeppelin still didn't give up. They melted the remaining Zeppelin parts to produce Zeppelin spoons and balls and asked the German people to donate money for the Zeppelin project. In the meantime, the Zeppelins became very popular in Germany and people donated a massive 6 million Reichsmark. Now Zeppelin could found a new Zeppelin company and instead of only relying on the military to buy a Zeppelin, he also founded the first commercial airline, Delac, in 1909. So he could now additionally earn money with passenger flights. The Zeppelin company produced more and better airships and transported over 34,000 passengers until 1914 without a single accident. So I hope you liked this look back in history and if you did please consider to become a B-Sport Club member for more videos like this.